All right, so we're doing a TES tutoring session, and we are here with Greg Sperry. All right, Greg, uh, a couple questions before we begin. I ask everyone this. Uh, how much experience do you have with the Epic Storm? I started playing Storm in last December, but I started with Ant, and then I've been switching back and forth, but I finally settled on Tess about three to four months ago. Cool. I'm glad you made the right choice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you think that your biggest weaknesses are with playing TES? I think that I have a really hard time with Delver, especially. Okay. I haven't gotten the chance to play against it a lot, and every time I do, I get crushed. All right, that probably shouldn't happen. Uh, I think you're a favorite at this point in time, uh, but hopefully we'll face some Delver, if not at least that Shadow, because Shadow's very similar. And I, the next question is our final question, and I typically uh, think that we should, but it's up to you. Would you like to know what our opponents are playing? Um, sure. Okay. So, now we'll go over the deck list. Uh, this is probably what I'll be running in uh, Grand Prix Richmond. So, you'll notice we're back to being pure Grixis. I don't think Xanid's form is very good in the metagame anymore. And that's because the control decks aren't always miracles nowadays. Like, there's Grixis control and... Even some other decks running around that just aren't pure blue-white, and they end up having a lot of discard or burn, like Lightning Bolt. So Xanathorm is not very good in those matchups. And Counterbalance is only a two of. Like, while Abrupt Decay is nice, the odds that you have it and they have Counterbalance are not super high. So paired that with Xanathorm not being good, I think now is the time to cut green. So uh, you'll notice there's two copies of Surgical Extraction, Chain of Vapors back, and there's actually Grape Shot on the sideboard. Uh, I was testing Massacre for a long time, and I do like Massacre, but I've lost some percentage points in a couple matchups, so like Four Color Loam and Death Shadow from not having Grape Shot. I think that Death and Taxes is a favorable enough matchup. Uh, looking at my spreadsheet real quick, uh, we're currently at 72.5% against Death and Taxes. So I think Massacre probably adds 2 to 3%. So I don't know if you really need a card dedicated to a matchup that's already incredibly favorable. Uh, in the main deck, you'll notice there's two Badlands, uh, Basic Island, because in my last video there was no island, and uh, two Badlands instead of two Volcanic Islands. That's because Badlands is probably the best land in this deck, and you need a third red source if you're going to support Pulverize. Reg. I know I've been talking a lot at this point. Do you have any questions about the deck list? No, I like it a lot. In fact, I've personally never been playing green. I just, I haven't been a huge fan of Xanthus Firm. Well, that is crazy, but right now I don't <laughs> think it's very good in the metagame. All right, so let's go to the play lobby and let's begin. All right, so the way that this is going to work is that I would like you to be driving. Like, I want you to talk about what you would do, and then I will make all of the motions, but I will talk through what I think is also correct. So I want you to be the one to make first steps, first judgments, and then I'll say, well, I would consider this, or I think it should be this, and then explain why. Does that work? Yep, sounds great. Cool. Uh, while we wait, uh, I guess I'll talk about why uh, you are getting a free The Epic Storm TES tutoring session. Uh, Greg was nice enough to volunteer to do a bunch of uh, intern type work that I did not want to do personally. Uh, we have a landing page coming eventually when I stop being a sack of shit uh, for Modern Storm. It's basically built at this point, but I've been lazy and haven't done the typing up of matches card choices, and cyborg guy, but Greg's done a lot of the grunt work in finding old articles, old SCG videos, old feature matches in general about Blue-Red Gift Storm, and he's done a lot of stuff I don't want to, so we are thanking him with a TES tutoring session. Alright, we have our first opponent. Benjamin13. I believe I've faced them before. And we won the die roll, which is pretty sweet. 
They were on lands last time I faced them. Pretty positive matchup. I did lose to it the other night, though, but mostly because I'm an idiot. <laughs> Alright, Greg, what do we do? I like this hand a lot. This hand gets to cast a Ponder on turn one, and if we don't get Wastelanded, then we're going to get to cast Ad Nauseam on the second turn of the game and probably win. I am following you on that. Our opponent has mulliganed. Alright, so you mentioned turn one ponder, correct? Yep. Hmm. Rainstorm, dark red. Uh, I think that we should definitely keep the dark... I think we're definitely going to keep this ponder because... This lets us cast Ad Nauseam even if we do get Wastelanded off of our C. So we should probably stack it so that we can draw Dark Ritual and LED. But what order? Uh, we should draw the LED first since it's less important. I disagree. Uh, so there's a 100% correct answer here, so I'm just going to veto you. Okay. Uh, Lion's Eye Diamond is not the card we draw. It's Dark Ritual. The reason why is Ghost Quarter. So if they Ghost Quarter us, we end up not having the Dark Ritual and we have an LED that's less valuable. Okay, that makes sense. Alright, so now we draw the Lion's Eye Diamond. How do you sequence? I don't think that we need to play out our LED to crack it for mana first, so I would just go Dark Rit, Dark Rit, Ad Nauseam. So you're not casting Rite of Flame? Oh yeah, we do have the Rite of Flame. Uh, yeah, I would cast the Rite of Flame and then cast the Dark Rituals. Okay. So, in general, uh, best practice is to always cast Rite of Flame first because it's a sorcery. Uh, I understand it doesn't matter in the lands matchup, but it's good to have good habits so that way down the road everything comes as second nature and you're not doing things wrong in a matchup where it might matter so uh what do you do here i would cast ad nauseum leaving red black floating okay Are you stopping here, or are you continuing? Four, five, six, seven... Uh, let's see. They're dead, so I'd stop. Alright, so from here it's pretty much uh, autopilot, so I'm just going to take it. Yep. Uh, you always want to be casting cards like Lotus Petal and Chrome Mox before you cast your Lion's Eye Diamonds. Once again, best practice. Mm -hmm. It's good to get into the proper habits. And you don't need to break your Lion's Eye Diamonds here because you have 4 mana. So this is not the typical TES tutoring session. Uh, we are doing it this way because Greg is not a Moto user, uh, which is absolutely fine. You don't need to have Moto in order to have a TES tutoring session. Uh, generally it's preferred if the student is the one driving, but we're doing something a little bit different today. So it's part of the reason that we're showing this. Alright, so for sideboarding, I don't 
exactly remember what the website recommends, but I know we're bringing in bounce spells and cutting ponder, and I think we cut empty as well since that card pretty is pretty bad against Tabernacle. You hit the nail right on the head. Plus five, minus five. Although uh, I'm not going to do it, but uh, a couple weeks ago I lost to surgical extraction out of lands. I could have sequenced it so it didn't happen, but I played very poorly. So it's just something to keep in mind. Mm -hmm. So what do you think of this hand? It'd be a lot better on the play, obviously, since we could remove the possibility of a turn one discard, or a turn one um, lock piece. I think it's maybe good enough. It's not great, though. I think that this is probably a low-end keep. Like, you have three mana sources, and you can't guarantee that six is going to have three mana and a tutor. So I think it's a perfectly reasonable keep. Plus, lands doesn't always have a turn one. Like, yeah, they have a lot of ways of doing it between crop rotation and diamond, but sometimes they just pass on turn one, so... There we go. Alright, so what's the play? Uh, play Badlands and Dress. I agree with that. So, some of you might be thinking, hey, like, why not Thoughtseize? Uh, so, like, they only play Tireless Tracker as creatures, and... I'd rather not use the two life if I don't need to. Take crop rotation, obviously. Yeah. Putting life from them in the graveyard seems pretty miserable. I agree. I'm actually just kind of wondering why they didn't crop rotation in response. Yeah, that seems kind of loose. I would expect to be wasteland at this turn. Yep. Maybe they just wanted a higher chance of hitting that uh, Spear of Resistance or a Thorn. That could be it. Really wanted to draw an LED there. Alright, so what's the play? I think we could just play out the Underground Sea and pass, because... We know that they didn't draw a lock piece or they would have played it, so there's no point in thought seizing. Alright, so I agree with playing out Underground Sea, but I think that you should play Chromox and Imprint Thought Seize. This helps it, or helps you, so that if they do draw Sphere Resistance, you have a mana, a permanent mana source in play already. And I do know that some must play EE, so I would not play Lotus Petal. And as far as I know, our opponent can't actually wasteland us here unless they drew it. So next turn, there's a chance that we can go off. Well, port's very similar, so that's probably not happening. Are we casting duress? I think so, just to get it out of our hand, so it doesn't bog our hand up next turn for Infernal Tutor if we get the chance to go off without LED. I agree. Pretty obvious take. take. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. This guy does not like to cast life from the loam. Evidently not. Easy peasy. Alright, so what are we doing? One, two, three, five, six. Let's oh, we're a mana short. Yep. Yeah. yeah, I think we just have to pass here. 
My mind was a little bit on autopilot there. For some reason, I thought we had an Aussie in hand and not Infernal Tutor. I think my mind being on autopilot is what's led to me making the most mistakes with this deck than anything else. So, based on our opponent's play, yeah, I was going to say I would expect Dark Depths and then for them to not port us because I think they just want to make a 20-20 on the end step. Called it. So what's the play? Well, we need to brainstorm first, I think. And then we should not play anything else out because that gives us the most cards to put back in case we do draw a way to kill them. I agree. Alright, let's put back Dress and Chromox, and then we'll just have a easy Ad Nauseam line here. Yep. We'll grab a basic. So as we talked about before, right of flame. And then we cast the infernal. It doesn't really matter what mana you leave floating. And we don't have a 4 in our deck, so this is going to be a pretty powerful ad nauseum. Or at least we hope so. Alright, so are we stopping? Yes, this should be enough. Wait, do we have two initial mana sources? We have two copies of Chromox. Okay, then that's plenty. Okay, so uh, we could just go right a flame uh, off of a red mox and then dark ritual off of a black mox, but I want to take this second to uh, give you a learning uh, possibility for the future. Let's say that this uh, ad nauseum only revealed one initial mana source and not two, hypothetically. Okay. So what I would do is I would imprint this brainstorm or the Equian Truth, but because we have two brainstorms, I'm just going to do that. And then we'll play out this Mox. We'll add a blue and then add a black. We're going to chain a vapor targeting our Mox. And this would just let us build enough storm to win off only one color of mana, is that correct? Uh, well, it's not the storm count that uh, is the learning opportunity here. It's that if you only had one Chromox, you could use it to get both black and red. So what you do is you would sacrifice your land, bounce the other Mox, and now you have two initial mana sources. Right, that makes sense. Okay, opponent. Oh, wow. Did not expect that. Well, we can't do anything about that. So I guess we have to <laughs> let that resolve. <laughs> That's kind of funny. Yeah. Uh, okay. We're still in a very, very good spot here. in our spell fizzles. And I believe we have to pass the turn. Yeah, we could go up to three, but that doesn't accomplish anything since we don't have we don't have red mana for Burning Wish. 
Okay. Uh, it kind of sucks that our opponent had that because they. I mean, we got to do what we wanted to do anyway. But it made us look foolish for taking the opportunity to talk about something. I don't want to discard Burning Wish in case uh, they're on the surgical list. So I'm going to discard this Delta and the Tutor. I disagree with that. I think this person should have been like using life from the loam on us. All right, so what's the play? I think we should lead on a brainstorm. Off of what? The blue chrome mux. Put back. Hmm. Well, we do have the possibility of echoing truth on our Chrome Mux to generate Storm Count, so I think we just put, put, put back the duresses here. Uh, I disagree with that. So I don't want to lose to a crap rotation or anything silly. So I would put back Brainstorm in a duress. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, there's like little reason to leave yourself the possibility of losing to like Mind Break Trap or like any silly card that like you just didn't plan for when you have the resources available. Probably should have done this before the Rite of Flame. That was a mistake on my part. And I guess if our opponent had grip, it makes sense why they were uh, willing to leave themselves untapped. So now that the coast is clear, we can cast Dark Ritual, Lotus Petal, and then Echoing Truth back our Chrome Mux. I agree. What color mana? Uh, pay, pay with black. There's just no reason to imprint there. Cool. Match one. Easy enough. So generally those sort of kills for my spreadsheet purposes. While we cast a nauseam that game, I count them as natural storm kills because we didn't win the turn we cast at Nauseam. That's an interesting distinction. I myself would consider that to have been an ad nauseum kill because we use that as our engine. Uh, I... I disagree with, like, for my spreadsheet purposes, uh, if you're not casting a nauseum that turn, it's not really the engine, because you had to start from zero on the next turn, in my opinion. That's at least how I've been doing it the last, like, two years, so I don't want to change at this point. But That makes sense. If that's the case, I feel like a lot more kills would be considered ad nauseum kills than, like, your natural storm kills. Not that it matters, because, uh, like, but I think... To show the ability of going off from zero is important. And if you just lump everything in Dad Nauseam, you don't get as much data. 
or at least like clear data in my opinion. Right, I can see the benefit in distinguishing between ad nauseum kills where we killed them that turn and where we killed them the turn after. Cool match too. Oh, this is uh, Aaron, I believe. He's a Toronto native, and in a couple of chats that I'm in, he loves Landstill. That's an interesting deck choice. So, what do you think? This hand seems fine against a control deck. We have a Ponder and a Thoughtseize, and lens to cast it, so I would keep. I don't love Burning Wish in this matchup, but I do think it's fine. I think that the bur first Burning Wish is probably getting passed in Flames. Ooh, not land still. Aaron says wrong format for that. So I guess he only likes Vintage Land still. I generally like Burning Wish against decks that lead on uh, Underground Sea. This is because it can get Empty the Warrens, and Empty the Warrens tends to be pretty good against those decks. Right, we don't have to worry about getting Terminus or anything like that. Exactly. I think I probably agree with that, Thoughtsies. I think we should play Delta, and I don't think that we should cast the Thoughtsies. We're pretty far away from comboing, and if we cast the Thought Seize now, we might have to go off later unprotected, or we might just end up having to take a cantrip or something silly like that. So, I don't think I would do that. What I would do is I would actually just reveal that we drew Swamp and cast Thought Seize. I wouldn't want to get hit by him to Torak next turn, and our opponent also mulliganed, so I want to take away what's going to stop them from developing their hand anymore, and then on turn two you can just Burning Wish for Empty. I think that's the correct play line here. Like, being proactive is generally best in Magic. And you're, like, you're more than likely going to draw another uh, discard spell by the time you want to go off. Alright, so, Greg, what would you take here? The visions don't really matter. I think we're going to be winning the game before that. The Decay, I don't think that matters very much either, so I would take the Baleful Strix because it could draw them to a possible out for Empty. I agree. Also, I have not seen Shroud this bug in a very long time. Double Suspend. Only one. That's kind of interesting. So what would you do here? I would Burning Wish for Empty. What land are we getting? Um, I 
Volcanic Island. I agree. Even before we drew the ponder, I would have gotten Volcanic Island. So this is like a really small thing that I doubt people notice, but I have two different arts for MT in my board. I always try to get the original whenever I Burning Wish, because I don't want people to see the one that I get with Burning Wish, and then maybe have seen the one that I had main deck and notice that they're different arts, and then assume that I boarded in more. That was a good draw. Alright, so what do we do? I would play out the Lotus Petal first, and then Rite of Flame, Rite of Flame empty. Okay. So I follow you partially on that. Oh, we have the Mana to Ponder, don't we? Or Burning Wish. Hmm. Four... I think I like Ponder because it might be able to draw us into something to increase our storm count. I agree. And if it hits like another Ritual or Rite of Flame, you can uh, Burning Wish. So this is a pretty good Ponder. Four. I think I would draw the LED and then play LED then empty. Okay. Uh, I disagree with that. So I think you stack this so that Tutor's on the bottom, LED is on top, and then you draw Duress. You cast Duress this turn to make sure that it's not gonna, your tokens aren't in, in danger of being swept or a main deck fluster storm. Like, there's little reason to not Duress this turn, I think. So our opponent still doesn't have anything. Um, we should maybe I, take Decay because the vision's not going to matter. Visions could be brainstormed back and then like play it into play with Agent. Like your their Decay is they're literally trading a turn to trade one of your twelve Goblin tokens. And I think like if they decide to Decay, you're okay with that, rather than right. just possibly get finding them they're out in a chain of weird events, you know? So I believe they're going to draw four cards next turn. Oh no, they're still one off. Nice. Alright, so are you doing anything else this turn? Uh, Burning Wish for Past and Flames. I agree. So, let's say that your opponent miraculously finds a sweeper next turn. You can actually empty again. So what you would do is you would play out your Lion's Eye Diamond. You would Infernal Tutor. In response, you would crack Lion's Eye Diamond for three red. You get the third Rite of Flame, cast Rite of Flame, flashback past in flames, flashback through Rite of Flames and empty. And they say we're not a past in flames deck. I don't know what they were thinking. So that was a natural storm kill with empty out of the sideboard on turn three. All right, so would you board here? I would bring in additional copies of Empty. Okay. So, in my personal experience, when you kill someone with game one with an Empty, they're probably going to be more likely to keep sweepers. And I don't know if I want to get max punished by that. So there's like really two thoughts here. You can bring in the two Empties and go like super deep, or you can not sideboard, or you can take a middle road. Uh, up a game, I try to not sideboard, 
but I think it would be okay to board out one burning wish for one empty. I wouldn't want to do two, personally. Uh, that said, this is your tutoring session. What would you like to do? I think I like the idea of taking the middle road and just shaving uh, one wish for an empty. And this is the one with the other arts. So we know which one it is. I'm going to disable flux. Ooh, that got very bright. I like this hand. This hand has lands, mana, and then some cantrips to find us hopefully what we need to win. Yeah, seems good. Oh wow, that is so bright. My eyes are a little sensitive. Uh, today at work someone uh, sprayed like a perfume and I had my contacts in. And all the rest of the day my eyes were just like bugging out. I think I might have allergies. Not that anyone cares about this, but <laughs> that is my life. Alright, so what are we doing? I think that I would play out a uh, polluted delta, fetch underground sea, and cast ponder. So I think that you're like half right here. I think there's very little reason to not get basic island when you have three cantrips. And, like, you're just opening yourself up to Wasteland when you don't need to. So, I'm going to get Island. Pretty good. Yeah, that's almost perfect. Uh, I would draw the LED and play it out to play around him the Torak or a Discord spell. I like that. That said, you do open yourself up to abrupt decay, but I think our opponent is good enough where they likely would have boarded decay out. I would also imagine that they have more discard spells and hymns in their deck post board than abrupt decay, so even if they have one or two in, I think I'm willing to take that risk. I agree. Womp womp. Alright, so what's the play? So we know that we have a Lotus Petal on the top of our deck. Um, I think I like casting Brainstorm here. Okay. Because Personally, I'd probably play out a land first, but let's do it. I'd be surprised if they had days... And it gives us more flexibility if we want to play a different fetch. I would put back uh, Badlands and Blood Saint Meyer. Uh, so I would think a little differently here. I think we probably want to put back uh, Meyer with Tudor on top. Oh, to protect against a discard spell? Yeah. Well, not, like, the counter-argument is that you could fetch and hopefully draw a discard spell next turn. So, you can either play around their discard or hope to draw a discard for theirs. For their interaction. Excuse mm. me. I think I want to try and draw a discard spell. Okay, so what would you like to put back then? I would put back a, a fetch and badwands, and then we would fetch on their end step. I think it's very likely that they have some form of counterspell in our action. So, I don't think that we brainstorm correctly there. I think there's little reason to 
not uh, put back the underground sea. Because, like, when you have basic island, your best dual land is Badlands. And now, like, we can't fetch for basic swamp and then have Badlands. Right. What am I fetching for? I would fetch for Badlands at this point. Okay. For what it's worth, I think they're... They probably don't have Forest Blue card. But I could be wrong. Like, if we draw a tutor, I think we should just jam. It's not bad. Yep, yeah, cast the Ponder. Lots of islands. I would draw Rite of Flame. Or I would stack it Rite of Flame, Empty, LED, and then pass the turn. Why would you do that? Oh, we have a land drop, right? We can just uh, draw the empty and then make six. Eight. I don't think... So you've cast Ponder? Lotus oh, yeah, Petal. put the Ponder. So I would empty here. The downside yeah. is that like you pretty much lose if they sweep. And I think that you should play out the Petals and then the land because sometimes people will force pedal if you play pedal last so this way it looks like you're still holding something spicy Oh man, maybe he does have force. Boom! I would have lost. You're a very skilled wizard, Greg. Thank you, I appreciate it. So he opened up on him duress force. That's a pretty strong start. The downside is we have to draw through the other two cards off Ponder. And the casualties. Alright. So do you hold it or do you cast it? I would cast it. We're not gaining anything by holding it in our hand. If they draw another discard spell, we lose it. And we already have one in play, so... I guess the argument would be E. I think out of this deck, you... That's pretty good. Uh... It's more likely to be Maelstrom Pulse than E. For what it's worth, that was the sideboard empty. So, no matter what it was, either Burning Wish or empty, it would have gotten wrecked there. Yep. Come on, Burning Rush. Not Burning nope. Rush. All so right. did, would your sideboarding strategy change for Game 3? Personally, I think I'd rather have the fourth wish, but it's up to you. I can see that. We, we've seen that they have sweepers in their deck now, so just go back to the full suite of wish. It's not bad. Sand is very good, I would keep. How are you playing it? I would... Uh, well, should we duress on turn? Let's see. One, three, six. I think that I would just play a fetch and pass, because we'll be able to duress and make goblins on the second turn. Okay. Uh, I'm a little indifferent on the play here, but... I do like Duress on turn one a lot of the time. My issue is that we could easily just get Thossies here, and then our hand isn't good. Yep. Yeah. So that's the issue. Like I don't. I think that people get too comfortable waiting for 
uh, the turn that they combo off in order to play a discard spell, and I don't typically agree with that strategy. Uh, so, like, now we have to hope to draw one of our seven discard spells, but if we play that on turn one, you gain so much more knowledge, and now we don't get to see their hand. Uh, like, if I was the one driving this, I would have 100% of play dress on turn one. Like, not a doubt in my mind. So would you like to fetch, or do you want to keep it in play? Um, I would go ahead and fetch. We could fetch basic island here. We've got bad winds and another fetch in our hands, so we'll definitely be able to cast our spells. The only downside is if you uh, do draw a discard spell, you can't combo. For what it's mm, worth. That, that's a good point. Yeah, I, I suppose we should just fetch... Um, like, I'd probably get Underground Sea. Yeah, Underground Sea is the best bet, I guess. That way, if you draw a cantrip. Yeah. So you leave yourself with both. That's not bad. So I think the plan here, and you can disagree with me if you'd like, is to cast Ritual, LED, and then Empty for 6, see if they have a Sweeper, and then that way you have Burning Wish, Pass, and Flames as backup. I like that. That makes sense. We might see a forcible on this dark ritual. Our opponent has information on what our hand is, so like typically we wouldn't cast this blind. Are we getting casual? Yep. Come on, discard spell. That was nice. Yep. Alright, so what are you fetching for? Hmm. Volcanic Island to have the second red source. I agree. I would have done the same. Force, wow. Force, Strix. That's a very good hand. I guess we take the one of the forces and then try to draw to another discard spell. And then we'll Burning Wish for Fast and Flames this turn. I think that there's a strong possibility this gets forced, but if it does, you're fine with it. Yep. Alternatively, what could happen is he allows it to resolve and then Thought seizes us, uh, and then we have to draw a discard spell to flashback our past in flames. So I think we're definitely getting past in flames here. There's not really an argument for anything else. I agree. Because I just said it. Boom. <laughs> now he's going to fetch and play Strix.
So the risk is if he doesn't draw a blue card. And I think that's what he's thinking about right now. Mm. So... Four, seven... Down to two... We could theoretically empty this turn. We could. Uh, so, do you want to trade Lion's Eye Diamond and Past in Flames for Force of Will and a card out of their hand? Well, we don't know that they have a blue card, right? Correct. They could have missed. They could have missed. We're drawing to only six discard spells, so I think I like just going for it here. Okay. Do you agree with that? Uh, it's a tough decision. I'd probably go for it, because I'm a t the type of person that likes to jam. I think playing the long game doesn't favor this deck, and because of that, I would go. Yeah, I'm fine with the coin as well. I'm gonna fetch. It's technically wrong to do it this way because we get double blown up by surgical. But, like, our opponent doesn't have surgical or else they would have used it already. Definitely. Alright, show me your blue card. Storm. Maybe there's an argument there for not comboing because they might not have cashed the, the Strix if they didn't already have another blue card in hand. So that is a thought, but he tanks so long on it that I'm pretty sure he didn't have another blue card. Like, I'm willing to bet that, that Brainstorm was drawn off the Baleful Strix. We're also not dead. Like, we could easily draw Infernal Tuker into Ad Nauseam. I guess that's another reason. <laughs> yeah, another reason to jam. We didn't see it, but it just happened to be a good coincidence. Yep. Well then. That's right. a good one. Let's draw plus one mana next turn. Uh, I wanted him to fate seal and put a land on top. No justice. Oh, that'd be fantastic. No! Oh, no, this isn't good. No! Oh. We just lost. That's exactly what just happened. <laughs> So without Ad Nauseam or Past in Flames, our ways of winning this game are pretty slim. And we would have drawn the land. Alright, I'm going to take the decision away. I'm going to concede. Yeah, I would, I would probably concede here too. We're not going to be able to win this one. That was a good game. Yeah, casting that uh, duress on turn one, the definite or not casting on turn one, definitely cost us percentage points there. The upside of knowing their hand was definitely more important. Yeah, I think like people get too comfortable in like the, hey, I need to hold this until the turn I combo. Where like you're just better off being proactive. And, like, playing the odds that your opponent didn't, doesn't peel exactly the card that stops you. Like, sometimes it is right to hold it, but not on turn one. Like, if it's turn seven and you saw their hand on turn four, I could see holding duress.
So as a general rule, you would recommend casting discard spells on turn one if you don't have another play? I probably would. Oh, we found like an we have, opponent. Yeah, sorry. I am paying for the TES Sight Rider gifts. I found them something super sweet that I will not share because people will eventually watch this. But I am excited for them to receive these gifts. Too bad they have to wait four months until the holidays. Motherfuckers. Fade to black. I have never faced this person before, but apparently... They were born uh, January 1st, 1983, or they just really liked the month November. <laughs> uh, this hand seems fairly reasonable. We've got Ritual is and Mana and Cantrips. Yeah, I would keep this. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Oh, just Blood Moon? Oh, we can one. beat that one. Yeah. The old Dragon Stompy. What's the play? I think that I would play out our Lotus Petal and cast Ponder. Okay. Uh, that's certainly a line we could take. Uh, I think you're throwing away your black source if you do that. So I probably would just pass. Okay. Odyssey Mountain. I can appreciate that. Not Trinisphere. You can have an Incendiary Bridge. That is like the best three mana card that they could have possibly played. <laughs> Definitely. We draw a burning wish for going to town. Another reason I like not playing the Lotus Petal is if you draw a Chrome Mox, like you just have built in, you know, good stuff. Mm -hmm. Alright, so I would probably pay the pe uh, play the pedal here to avoid discarding. Right. And if they have Maybe a fiery confluence that blows up artifacts, right? Yeah. You just cast we brainstorm. Could, yeah, we could just respond with the brainstorm, exactly. So now that there's a clock on us, does it change the math of whether to play one of our cantrips? If we're playing a cantrip, I kind of want to play Brainstorm over Ponder. The reason is if we draw... I guess if we draw Inferno Tutor, we need a Black Source, too. Yeah. But I want the ability of becoming Hellbent. Mm -hmm. Alternatively, we could wait a turn and go a card deeper. But by doing so, you're giving them two looks at a Chalice. I think we need to be be proactive here and try and find something. Okay. Uh, brainstorm or ponder, it's your choice. I think if you ponder, the only card you can get is Burning Wish for 
empty, but they have been in Snaring Bridge. So, like, I think Brainstorm gives you higher probability of winning. That's my personal opinion. Yeah, I, I agree with that. This, But we're going to need to find a black source anyways. So, I, I think Brainstorm's correct. Don't think we can win. Yeah. Um, Doesn't really matter. We're going to have to redraw all of them. We don't have time. That's just a loss. Yeah. Alright, so we know these five are coming in. What would you like to board out? The ponders, they're too slow. Okay. Well, there's still another card. Um, probably the empty. I disagree it with that. Like, sometimes you just have to keep hands that can jam four mana in turn one. Right. So, I think you brought out one copy of Duress. Thoughtseize hits everything in their deck. Duress doesn't hit, like, a uh, Scab Clan Berserker or, like, something like that. Uh, this allows turn one wins. And on, like, the worst possible case, you can Burning Wash for Dress if you need to. Okay, that makes sense. I forgot to update our record. I know you can't see it, but we are now one and one. What you think? I like this hand. We can cast Thought Seize on turn one to remove a lock piece and then probably win on the second turn. Cool. Thought Seize it is. That's what I would do. Uh oh. Scab Clan. But they can't cast it. They can have a turn one rabble. We're fine with that. Uh, just take the chalice. But the, the pressure is definitely on to win next turn or find a bounce spell. Tomb. The good thing is, if we empty, it doesn't look like they have mana or the cards to blow it up. So, you have two options here. You can play Lotus Petal, use it for a red, cast Red of Flame, LED, Burning Wish, Empty. This is a guaranteed 10 goblins. Or you can Brainstorm and have possible 12 to 16 but if you miss you're kind of far behind yeah, yeah. Hmm. let's see guaranteed 10 goblins that does that beat rabble master currently let's see so i think that Good you pretty much have to leave at least one goblin back to block rabble like, you could probably take one Rabble hit, but then I think you have to leave one back. I just don't think that that's going to be good enough. I think I would cast Brainstorm. I would, too. I think 10 is just, like, kind of medium. When you could draw into this gorgeous, gorgeous hand. So now we can put back the Empty and the Echoing Truth. And then we can play out the chrome mox and print nothing. And then pedal LED, right of flame, right of flame, burning wish for empty. Alternatively, I mean, so here's the thing. Let's say that somehow we end up behind or they play like ensnaring bridge and empty their hands or not. Like, worst possible case scenario. Sure. We don't have enough mana to cast Sacrament Truth. So what we could do 
is we could put back Lotus Petal Echoing Truth and then play Chrome Mox and print Empty, which is Storm 2. Storm 3 Red of Flames, Storm 4 Red of Flames, Storm 5 Lion's Eye Diamonds, Storm 6 Burning Wish, Storm 7 Empty. And 14 will beat them anyway, but now we also have Echoing Truth. Right, okay, that makes sense. Oh shit. Oh, I forgot to unclick. Oh my god, I just punted that. I am so sorry. Oh, I forgot to... I'm an idiot. Um, is it still salvageable here? Let's see. We could mox, right? No, we just can't do anything. I screwed that up so badly. I am so sorry. We can't do anything. It looks like the screen share is broken a little bit. Why is that? Uh, some of the cards are distorted. I can't quite see our hand clearly. I will reshare with you. Can you see now? Yep, it's fixed. I'm so disappointed in myself. Alright. So... That sucked. Yeah, I guess we just have to have to go for it now. So we have enough mana to echoing choose something, I believe. Mm -hmm. So we'll go down to three, then down to one, then up to four. What would you like to echoing truth? We can do one of our own permanents for an extra storm, or we can bounce goblin tokens or even rabble master. I think rabble master is better since they won't have the mana to recast it necessarily. We might have salvaged my misclick. Woo. So will the sideboarding change on the play versus the draw? Or are we just going to run it back? Um, probably keep it the same, to be honest. We're on the draw. Like, Chain of Vapor is better on the draw anyway. Mm-hmm. Like, you could take out copies of Dress for more empty, but I don't like doubling down on a card that's already, like, not amazing because of Fiery Confluence. Mm -hmm. I would, would just rather have these to hit a possible turn to Genosphere. Well, that's a hand. Yep, this is a keep. Uh, that's nine mana, which means it casts Ad Nauseam. Come on, just play like a turn one rabble or a turn one blood moon. Yes. yes. Get dead. Get <laughs> dead. Oh, actually, right. uh, it doesn't make a turn one ad nauseum. We don't have spell mastery. Oh, that is a good point. We're still going to make goblins, I'd imagine. Okay. They're two mana away from Fiery Confluence. So I think we should cast these two. Like, you could just play it for the imprint. Mm -hmm. But I'd rather have the extra goblins. Because if they happen to play, like, blocker, blocker, I just don't want to, you know, be down. Right. Alright, we're not going to misclick this time. <laughs> Did we have to crack both uh, LEDs there? We didn't, but I got lazy.
Also, if they sweep here, it's going to be with Fiery Confluence, more than likely. Right. Or is it a random Volcanic Fallout? Ooh, they had a Chalice. I bet they feel foolish. I guess it could have been their draw step. Let's not discredit them. Oh, no, nope. our opponent just told us they forgot to play it turn one. Oh, well... So if they don't draw it. Yep. And we got there. Very nice. While we're waiting for that, I will update a record since I'm pretty bad at doing that. We're now two and one, and that was a turn one empty from the board. The different arts thing is really nice. I have that set up for my paper deck. I don't do it in paper. I think in paper you give up too much information. And pretty much the only paper I play is large events. So I care about doing well. Right. Most of my paper experience is just uh, weeklies and uh, GP side events. So for me, it's not as much of a priority. I'd like to know when I draw the sideboard copies. I guess that's fair. You also don't moto. So like, it's more relevant to you. I think on Moto it's more of a freebie. I think I spelled their last name right. We won the die roll. I just don't think this hand is, hand is doing anything for a while. This is a whole lot better. Yeah, I keep this. Come on, mine's that Evan. Our opponent is shipped down to five. Mm, I think we top that. So, I wouldn't. Uh, we don't have a black source, and we have to get rid of Duress. So I think we're just like time locking ourselves by keeping Bright of Flame. Right, we're, we are going to need the double black. We only have one black source currently in Lotus Petal. So what lane are we playing? Island to play around Wasteland. I get too lazy with F6ing. Sometimes we should pretend to be a blue deck. <laughs> All right, so Delta? Delta. Fetch basic swamp dress. I agree. Reanimator, fuck this deck. Oh. Explains why your opponent mulligan to five. Play Bloodstained Mire and pass. Come on, no entomb. Okay, I think we can handle an Ashen Rider. Sure. LED. There we perfect. go. I'm perfect at asking for cards. <laughs> for, All right. I've done that twice tonight. Best land in the deck. You might as well grab it. So best practice, right of flame first. Lion's Eye yep. Diamond is always last. But you already know that. Hold control. 
and there's no reason to use the lotus petal so we're not going to because this is a five color initial mana source so you can give us whatever we need My general rule of thumb is to always go down until it's no longer safe. One life is no longer safe. Right. I was actually recording the Sunday challenge this week, and I was caught up in talking about my play line, and I mm -hmm. stopped early because I didn't want to showboat, and then I realized that I was a mana short and then dropped from the event. <laughs> what was your record when you dropped? 1-2. I lost round two to Aldrazi, which happens. So that was a turn four. The late game against your animator. Not something that we see particularly often. Alright, so what are we doing here? I would trim on Ponder, because I don't think that card is very good, and Empty as well. And then I would just bring in the Bounce Spells. Just Bounce oh, Spells? Uh Oh, we, we have Surgical as well. Definitely the Surgical. So we have we can either bring in a Ponder or an Echoing Truth. I think I like Echoing Truth more than Ponder. I'd probably do the same, especially on the draw. On the play, I might bring in the Ponder. In your experience, has the Graveyard Hate made a difference in the Graveyard matchups? I have not been playing it in my list because I've found that I lose to the Graveyard decks anyways, even though that I have the Hate. So, the thing is, it's only a 2 of, you're not likely to draw it all the time, and when you do draw it, it can be discarded or whatever, but like you're going to get free wins. Like It will happen. But also, like I boarded it in against Sneak and Show, and I boarded it in against Miracles, where like you have more time to find them. Right. So, like, I think it's worth it because, like, also, the other cards you're playing there uh, in the two slots could be, like, Massacre and then, like, a random Burning Wish target, and I think Grape Shot and Massacre overlap so much. Like, you're just not getting the most value out of your slots. I spent a lot of time thinking about it the last few days. Like, I was trying to come up with the list earlier today without Surgical, and I literally just couldn't think of a 15th card I wanted to play. I've been playing a Talman's performance in that slot. Yeah, it's not good anymore, though. Like, both, like, the blue-black reanimator list has Arcana, uh, Artisan. Sneak and Show has Artisan. I just don't like it. I think if we lead on Swamp, it makes us look like we kept a sketchy hand without a discard spell, so I think we should play Island. Like, I think this maximizes them just reanimating. Right. But also, like, Lance has Tracker. I think Telemann is just, like, super, super narrow. Alright, so now we have to Surgical. Ah, they have Entomb. Do they have anything else? They have an Iona. They're probably going to get the Iona. Yep. And then we'll have three bounce spells left in the deck. It's weird that it didn't show us. We they still have an enemy dead in hand. Mm -hmm. Alright, well if we ever draw a bounce ball, we're set.
It was a very aggressive looting. I guess they still have another one, but if we draw a bounce spell, come on deck, bounce spell one time. I guess the best one here would be Chain of Vapor. Right, it would let us build Storm count. I'm sorry? It would let us build Storm count. Well, I think more importantly, we could cast it for one where the Echoing Truth it costs both of our mana sources. And we do not draw oh. it. Alright, seeing the Iona, I want to leave in the Echoing Truth. And I think we might even want to board out a wish for a truth. I don't know how you feel about that. I would probably do it personally. I'm curious as to why. I think that we need to be concerned with executing our game plan, but I guess we don't have that many good burning wish targets in, in our sideboard for this matchup, well, so it seems that's fine. That's my to... concern. Like, a lot of the time if we're going off turn one with burning wish, it's for empty, and if it's not, it's for a petition. Yeah. And I feel like more often than not, it's for empty. Like, you I, need a pretty good hand for Petition. Yeah, boarding down one wish for an Echoing Truth seems fine, then. Like, I'm not 100% on this, it could be wrong, but... If we're able to remove all the Gristle Brands, then having four answers to the other one seems really good. Uh... So, this is a mulligan, I think. I honestly don't mind these hands, but I could be wrong. So the reason I don't mind them is you put yourself in a scenario where their discard no longer matters because you can just play out your hand turn one and then live off the top of your deck. And how often are you going to open up a hand with Rituals and LED on six? Not very often. Like, how I would play this is I would play out everything, including the Moxes, and then I would leave myself with just our Virtual in hand. If this was a six-card hand, then I would snap keep it. It just, I, I don't know if this is something that I want to keep on seven, generally. It also plays through Chancellor. Like, I don't know. Like, I would keep this hand in a tournament, I think. Okay, we can keep it and see how it goes. So, like, even if we had Surgical there, it would have been discarded. Oh, did right. he just have everything? Well, shit. One problem that I see with this hand is that if what happens to us here happens where we just get discarded and say they pass the turn, then even if we draw ad, or Infernal Tutor, we don't have enough mana to add Nauseam. I agree, but I honestly don't think our odds would have been much better on 6. Like, I'm perfectly fine losing these games knowing that I can win off the top of my deck in a matchup where they have 12 discard spells. I guess it's not 12, it's more like 8. We saw this guy place both Cabal Therapy and Thoughtseize, though. Like, I honestly just don't think your average 6 is better than what we kept. So, oddly enough, if we draw 
Inferno off the top, we can cast Ad Nauseam next turn, even through a Chancellor. Uh, I think the downside is we wouldn't have enough mana to go like land Chain of Vapor without the chain getting countered. Right. Name black. All right. So if we go like Cantrip and a Burning Wish, they're dead. Granted, we boarded it out of Burning Wish, so it's not super high probability. Oh, well, fuck. I guess we could still win that way, right? Uh, we what? would draw the Burning Wish. I think we're actually one short. Because you could just cantrip and then break the LEDs. Mm -hmm. Well, there's the cantrip. Womp womp. Alright, choo choo. Like, I even wrote about keeping a hand like that in the uh, matchup mulligan against Reanimator. I want to say it was like hand five. But I'm perfectly fine keeping those hands and just accepting when I lose. Because I don't think, like, your average six card hands are nearly that good. Like, if you draw a Burning Wish plus, like, Ride of Flame and something else, you're not winning that game anyway. I think, like, you're just like, at a higher percentage to win keeping your seven there. And also, like, that deck mulligans into Oblivion, like, all the time. They're not always going to have, like, a turn one knots. Yeah, it's a, there's a very reasonable chance that they just mulligan and do nothing. I've faced this person, like, three times in the last couple of days, but I don't remember what they play. I want to say it's, like, Eldrazi, but I could be wrong. We lost the die roll. They were on Miracles and then Blue White Stone Blade. And I beat them both times, so hopefully we can keep up the same pattern and get our play points back. So what do you I think? think? This, I think this hand is very good. We have mana, a bunch of discard spells, we just need to draw a tutor or a wish to win. And they mulligan, which makes the discard spells even more impactful. I think we should lead on Badlands and cast Thoughtseize. Okay. I like Thoughtseize over Duress because if they've got a Stoneforge Mystic, we might end up wanting to take that to prevent a, a clock. What would you take here? I think I would just take the Force. I would take Predict. They just play Ponder. They chose not oh, to Shuffle. Right. And then you still have these for Force. Like, this just stops them from advancing. I would cast dress. 
So this is one of those weird scenarios where I don't know if it's right. Like, what do you gain by playing duress here? It plays around future brainstorms. If they don't have the brainstorm now, but they draw it later, then it could make our discard spell worse. Sure, but like future brainstorms, but you have double th uh, discard spell here. Like if you draw any mana source, we're now in the position where you can just double go. Like I'm not sure if playing it right now is correct. Like I would personally hold it. Like I don't think you need to. Okay. The only argument that I can see for playing a duress this turn is if you drew exactly Inferno Tutor next turn, you have enough mana to play Discard Spell into Ad Nauseum. But I mean, if you draw, well, <laughs> I guess uh, that helps clarify, but if you draw Inferno Tutor, I think you're already in a very good spot. So would you just pass here, since it's, it's possible that they've hidden the Force of Will? So I think I would actually play a discard spell this turn. Maybe I was wrong on the previous turn then, because I would want to be able to take Jace, so they don't just like take over the game with Jace. Right. Oddly enough, I know it doesn't make a lot of sense, but like I would play it this turn. Okay, yeah, I mean, it, we might want to end up taking their Jace since we have the second discard spell. Jace for sure here. I would fetch uh, Underground Sea and Ponder. Seven. Hmm. I think we can afford to wait a turn because that way we'll have enough mana to be able to dark petition for an ad nauseum and not lose to a terminus. But what are we doing right now? I would draw the uh, burning wish and then have the polluted delta a second. So I would draw the Delta so that way you can make your land drop. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And then next turn I'm probably playing Thought Season to Burning Wish for a petition. We know we don't want the top card. So we're a mana short of petition for ad nauseum this turn. Because we could go right of flame and then ritual ritual petition. We'll have three floating petal is for so we could MP but we can't petition. So I think our lines are we can either burning wish or petition, we can go all in on empty, or we can get past the flames and just go for the super long grindy plan. I'm also getting a little concerned about our opponent having all basics and us having all non basics. 
I'm pretty in favor of just going for empty here. They cast that for the will, so I don't think we're going to get a better turn to make goblins. And we're leaving ourselves open to another force, fluster storm, a number of things if we just pass a turn. Counterspell. Oh, wait, we have lethal. We just have tendrils. Oh, yeah, that too. <laughs> Accidental wins. We went way too deep in the tank on that one. <laughs> Skilled wizards. So you mentioned forward. that you like surgical in this matchup? I do. And I like boarding in tendrils over the empty. So with this plan, I was boarding out Rite of Flames a lot. I With only boarding in surgicals, I like boarding out a Mox and then boarding out a Wish. Just because like Wish is best target in this matchup is Passive Flames, which is great. But it's like sort of a slower game plan. And with a slower game plan, I think you have time to find your Burning Wish. And you don't have to use Burning Wish in order to win. Right. So, like, your other option is burning out Ponder, but I think Ponder is better against Miracles. So, do you do we have any incentive to board in one bounce spell, say, to hedge a Hate Bear, or is that just something that we can't play around? I think it's, like, wishful thinking. So, like, what are the odds you draw your one of while they draw their, like, two of, maybe one of? Like, I think a better argument would be, like, do you want to board an Echo Injury through Counterbalance? But my answer is still no. Like, I wouldn't do that personally. Right. I like this hand. It has Discard Spell, LED Tutor, Brainstorm, or Surgical. Yeah, I would keep this. I would play out Blood St. Meyer, Crack for Underground C, and Cast Ponder. I'm okay with this. Uh, so there's two things. One, they could just fetch and pyroblast. Two, they could just untap and play counterbalance. But I think your dress hitting counterbalance in these sort of scenarios is not uh, probable. Like they'll probably have spell pierce, brainstorm, or fluster. So I think like j just jamming the dress and hoping to hit counterbalance isn't. Uh, likely, so I'm okay with pondering here. If they do pyroblast next turn, you can brainstorm, fetch away the tendrils. Like, it opens up a better line, I think. I don't think this is a shuffle. We want the lands and the brainstorm. How are we stacking it? I would draw, fetch brainstorm. I would just leave it how it is. Could have just played, uh, now I can't even think of it. The one blue draw card from, like, Kamigawa that was arcane. <laughs> Alright, so what are we doing? I'm in favor of just duressing and passing. Because we already know the cards from our, we already know the card from our brainstorm, so I think there's an incentive to just wait. I think that's like sort of wasting a duress to be honest. Like you don't gain anything by playing duress this turn. Like what are you looking to hit? Force maybe, but we can just hit that when we combo, so. Do you think that we should brainstorm this turn or just pass since we know the cards? I would I would personally want to brainstorm on the round step. Or like even in response to that would have been good. Uh too bad I already clicked. But that makes it so if we brainstorm in response, they have to use their fetch to not have a perfect brainstorm. I think we should do it now. Yeah, I like this play a lot. Out. I would put back tendrils. He's and... putting back tendrils right, though? Yeah, we, we have the possibility of a natural tendrils, actually, so... I kind of like putting back, like, tutor and... Maybe even a brainstorm. It's like that or like tutor and uh, surgical. I think tutor brainstorm seems fine. If we want to be on the uh, natural tendrils plan, then surgical could certainly help with that. 
Is Trent just greedy? I think Ad Nauseam is more likely to win than Tendrils. I think we should put back Tendrils Brainstorm. I know I sound like a crazy person right now. Yeah, I'm fine with Tendrils Brainstorm. It. So alternatively, we could do uh, Tendrils Volcanic Island just because we... I guess it's not going to come up, but we don't have a blue source to fetch for with the mire. But I think I'd rather have the third land and just, like, not be able to brainstorm. I if, you wouldn't I, mind, if you wouldn't mind resharing again, the cards are distorted. Oh, yeah, no problem. Thank you. How's it now? Uh, I can't see it all now. It should be coming back to you. Okay. Nothing? Nothing. There we go. Okay. I kind of feel like we should search up Basic Swamp with this Mire. I just don't want to be Stone Cold Dead to back to Basics. Are you good with that? Yep. That was very good. Alright. Two, three. I would cast Dress here. We could surgical brainstorm. That's one hundred percent what I would do. Yeah, see see if it's good to go, and then if it is, kill them. If not, then we can just uh, play a play a brainstorm of our own. So they have a spell pierce. That incentivizes us to wait, then. They have a Null Rod. Ooh. They also a have a Teferi and a Rest Surg in Peace. Surgicals as well. The old Surgical Rest in Peace, uh, Search for Escanta combo, and Grafter's <laughs> Cage. Yep. They only have one copy of Flusterstorm. They have two Spell Peers, and three Counter Target Spells. Weird, it's not showing us what we surgical. That's kind of annoying. Uh, so they had uh, spell pierce, jays, force, force, the tundra. Oh man, that sucks. Yeah. I mean, we could like go back and stop the video and replay, but it's not worth it. No. Oh. All right. I would cast it off of underground seas, obviously. That was good. Definitely. Mm. Put back... Huh. We definitely want to cast Burning Wish with Mana to Pay for Spell Pierce, so I would put back Rite of Flame Badlands. But we have a land available this turn, so Rite of Flame, Burning Wish... Draw Burning Wish, and then we'll pay, we'll play Fast and Flames this turn, and the next turn we'll be able to Burning Wish for a Past and Flames. I think we put back Rite of Flame Ritual, and then we make our land drop. Okay.
trying to remember what else was in their fucking hand. Alright. I like this. We knew about the Jace. Yep. So now we only, like, they have Spell Pierce Force. So we have to be able to blow through those two, and I think that we can do it. Oh, I stacked that wrong. I thought we were drawing Dark Ritual. Yep. Um, That's fine. Yeah, we still go for it. Uh, I'm an idiot. So I don't like showing them that we have LED here. Mm-hmm. Predict. There was another card we knew about. Okay. So they have Spell Pierce Axe. So did, did you play the rituals there to incentivize for saying the Burning Wish? I did. Okay. Like, you need to play Red of Flame anyway just because of, like, possible, like, multiple... I guess you, they can only play the one Pierce. But I, if we end up with a Past in Flames in our hand, if they let Burning Wish resolve, I want to be able to play Cantrips if I need to. Right. So... We're going to cast Wish. Or, not Wish, Tutor. I think we only break one LED. I like that because we'll be able to cast the Ad Nauseam with... We have a land drop this turn, right? Yep. Alright, yeah. Then definitely don't crack the second one. Alternatively, what we could do is just Inferno Tutor for Tendrils. Oh, yeah. We can just go for Inferno Tutor, Infernal Tutor Tendrils. I mean, we would just get one tutor, but tutor tendrils. Yeah, tutor tendrils. I think I like that better since if if they had if they had a, a force, then they would have used it before. It just like gets rid of some of the risk of going for ad nauseum. Like if you just happen to have a really bad one. Yeah, there's no reason to take to ad nauseum when we have the deterministic kill. Looks like we're getting our money back. It's gonna spell Pierce. All right, so pretty medium three two league. Yep. Uh, so, in general, I think that you were a little more skilled than some of the other people that do tutoring sessions. Uh, I think that you have a lot of the... So, typically I take notes during this, like I wouldn't be playing. So, you tend to think more ahead than other people, and I think that's a sign of someone that's a little more advanced with the deck. Like, a lot of newer players only think about this turn, for example. Mm -hmm. So I think, uh, in general, what you could get better with would be, we'll go back to the deck list while I talk, is knowing matchups a little bit more and knowing the, t the context of whether or not something is good at that moment, which comes with more reps. Uh, generally, playing online will get you more of those reps, but I understand that you're not a moto player, so... Uh, I'd probably recommend something like X-Mage, even though I've never personally used it. I understand that it's probably better than Cockatrice. Uh, because, like, I thought it was pretty obvious the game where I thought we should have dressed turn one. And then, like, dressing against Miracles, like, the places you wanted to do it didn't seem to make a lot of sense to me. Like, from my position, you were just, like, casting spells for the sake of casting spells rather than, like, finding a reason why you should be doing it. Mm -hmm. um, let's, let me look back at my other matches. Reanimator, like, you're more than welcome to argue the seven card keep. Uh, I'm sure tons of people will in the comments. Uh, but, like, once again, I would personally keep that hand every time. 
Uh, people are welcome to tell me I'm wrong, but I have a lot of experience in the matchup, and like I think I am more likely to win that game keeping that seven than with my average six. Uh, Dragon Stompy, I felt like you knew what you were doing for the most part. Uh, I obviously fucked up that one game, but you did not see the line of like the difference between fourteen and sixteen goblins that are like didn't make a whole lot of sense. So I right. think making it so you could echo in truth made a lot more sense. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, my fat fingers did not do what my brain wanted to do. Uh, and then we had our matchup against Shardless. That was a pretty good matchup. Uh, I think you made the right call game three with going for it. I mean, I probably would have too. Like, I don't think the long game favors you. And we saw that with the next turn. Like, our opponent played a Nile Spellbomb. So, like, it would have been a missed opportunity. So I thought that was fine. Uh, the lands was an easy matchup. I don't think there was a whole lot of play involved with that, to be honest. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that, that was our cut and dry there. Yeah, so uh, before we wrap up, I tend to have these uh, questions for everyone. Uh, do you think that this was worth your time? Definitely. I feel like that I learned a lot, and I'm very excited to try this out at my weeklies this week. Cool. Uh, how can I help you more in the future? Like, Was there anything I could have done other than my misclicks uh, that would have made this more enjoyable for you or would have uh, given you more insight? Um, no, I felt like that I learned a lot. I can't really think of anything that I would want to improve on besides having Moto myself to be able to play. That would have definitely made it a bit easier. Yeah. But that's obviously not something that I can control. I agree with that. Um, in the future, would you consider doing this again? Yes. Cool. And the last thing is, uh, would you please set uh, write a recommendation for the tutoring page of the website? Okay. Cool. Uh, well... Thank you for doing this, and once again, thank you for doing all of that work for the modern, pa the modern page of the website. Uh, I really do appreciate it, Greg. No problem. Thanks so much for the tutoring session. It was really nice of you to, to do that for me. Yeah. Uh, well, I hope you have a good night. Hopefully, I crush Richmond. So. All right. Best of luck. Yeah, thanks. See ya.